They handle like the big cars. They crash like the big cars. And they excite like the big cars. No, they are not toys. These are radio-controlled quarter-scale race cars that can eat up the track at speeds exceeding 60 miles per hour. Welcome to the bright lights of exciting Las Vegas. Host of the quarter scale and our vantage point is we stop to take a look at quarter scale racing at its best. Just like the full size cars, quarter scale embraces the power of the super modified, the competition of the Grand Nationals and the thrill of the outlaw sprint cars. From graceful motorcycles leaning into the turns without the aid of a third wheel to the biggest and baddest four-wheel drive monster trucks. Mechanics prepare these machines with the precision and know-how it takes to win. Pit crews ready to act in split-second time. And racers pushing their cars for that glorious checkered flag. Don't be fooled. This is the real McCoy, quarter scale racing. Like any other competitive sport, every quarter scale racer sets his eye on victory. But unlike the ruthless do or die competition of full size racing, quarter scale racers such as Dale Smith have a different outlook on race day. The thing about the, the car racing is it's fun. It's, it's important to just be a part of it. Uh, you can't win all the time, so if you expect to win all the time, forget it. You're going to break sometimes. You're going to win sometimes. You're going to win when you should have won. You're going to lose when you should have won. You're going to win when you shouldn't have won. And so there's a lot of racing luck. But being with the guys and lying to them and having them tell you big lies and seeing who can be the biggest liar and then who believes it and who doesn't is just part of it. They'll get together out there and they'll tap and they'll break parts. And a couple of words might get said here and there. But in 20 minutes, the guy will be over sharing parts and helping the guy with the car and helping get him back on the track and back in the race so they can just go to it and rock and roll. Good racing. And good racing is what these quarter-scale radio-controlled cars are all about. Strategy and control. Taking chances while avoiding disaster. Courage to seize opportunity and persistence to become leader of the pack. But behind every vehicle that operates to full potential, behind every victory lies the expertise of mechanics and the ingenuity of designers. This behind the scenes dedication gives the driver that little extra handling advantage through the turns, that added burst of power that speeds his car first across the finish line. Quarter scale racer and designer John Ray, president of Rayco, took time out of his busy race day schedule to explain some of the features that make his cars the fastest in the business. Okay, this particular car is one of the three classes in quarter scale. It's a super modified car. As you can see, it has the styling of uh, much like an Indy car, which is the way the full size super modified cars are going these days. It has fully independent front suspension and rear suspension. It has uh, rubber tires, much like the tires you would have on your family car, only one quarter size. They actually have the Goodyear logo on the tire, so they're uh, very authentic looking cars. The engine used in these cars is a 23cc weed eater engine, actually is what it is. Uh, they're designed to run on gasoline, but two of the classes, the sprint car class and the super modifieds, the majority of cars run on methanol. 
which is the same kind of fuel that they use at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Speedway cars. The second of the three classes in quarter scale is what we call outlaw sprint cars, and these are actually quarter scale size version of uh, the sprint cars you see on television that you might see Steve Kinzer driving or uh, Sammy Swindell or some of the other famous stars on the outlaw circuit. This is the lightest of the three classes. It's 19.5 pounds. So these cars have a little better acceleration uh, than the other two. As you can see, the suspension in the front is fully operational. Uh, these cars actually use stagger just like a full skies car would. And the right rear tire is actually somewhat larger than the left rear tire. And that's what helps the car go around the turn uh, as quickly as possible. The wing is made such that the two sideboards are staggered. In other words, this one's higher and this one lower. And that's so that when the car goes through the turns, uh, the wing provides the maximum side force from the air passing by the car uh, to make the car handle real well. The third class of cars in quarter scale is what we call Grand National cars or Winston Cup cars. This is the heaviest class of the cars. This car weighs 29.5 pounds. Many of the drivers paint the cars up uh, like Darrell Waltrip's car, like Dale Earnhardt's car, uh, and that's why people and spectators relate to them so well, is because they do resemble, uh, right down to the detail in the hood and paint lines, the, uh, the car that's seen on television every other Sunday. All of the classes boil down to who's the better driver uh, and who's the better mechanic at setting up the car. Before the racing begins, mechanics can be seen torquing and tweaking. The racers size up the competition, looking on with anticipation for their chance at the track. Meanwhile, spectators settle in during individual qualifications, and George Brazil, professional full-size and quarter-scale racer, makes a few last-minute adjustments on his outlaw sprint. I've been racing professionally uh, dirt track stock cars for somewhere in the vicinity of about 22 years, I guess. You lose the, the thrill of the feeling you get driving a real car, but what you do gain is by the background and the knowledge that I have, I'm able to watch the car and still have an understanding of the, of the feeling that it should have. And I, when I drive with the radio, it's just like I put myself behind the car and then I carry on from there and I drive. You know, it's just, uh, uh, it's a heck of a deal. You know, big car racing sometimes gets a little out of perspective, you know, as far as the entertainment of it amongst the racers. You know, for us, this is entertainment. It's competitive, don't get me wrong. I mean, we're here to race and we're all here to win. Of course, not all the attention was on the cars. Before the racing began, we got a chance to see a demonstration of the exotic and realistic high-powered quarter-scale motorcycles raced by champion Jens Jorgensen of Denmark. Well, the bike works in that way that the, the aero of the front wheel keeps the bikes up. And uh, when you have to turn, you, you, you turn directly on the, on the fork. When you turn to the left, the bike goes to the right. And that's what it's all about. It's just to limit that, that steering. Manufacturer Kenneth Harper of Live Performance explains some of the mechanics of the bike. The bike comes with a separated starting stand because the motor has no starter on, on board. And it uses a glow plug uh, ignition system, which you attach up front right in here. You start this uh, starter motor here, press the bike down onto the starter motor. And it engages the bike's flywheel. Well, the top speed of somewhere in the 55 to 60 mile an hour, this wheel is turning around 3,600 RPM. This is a steel chain that's lasted uh, over 300 hours on my first bike. It's geared two and a half to one to the rear transmission brake. The front brake is an aluminum disc, drilled and ventilated. Most of the stopping ability of the bike comes with the front wheel because as you decelerate, the weight changes to the front wheel. It is a trade-off when you race this bike. If you go into the turn too fast, 
the bike will slip out from underneath and you will fall and you lose time that way. If you go into a turn too slow, the bike conceivably could fall. So you have to be in a pocket at all, all the time. You can't be over anxious, you can't be too far behind. Unlike car racing, the bike does go down, you will spill, even the best racer will go down two or three times. I think anybody who has an inclination toward gas-powered scale bikes or cars would have a terrific experience in building this and driving it. We also had the chance to see some of the biggest and baddest trucks in the business. Stadium off-road trucks, two-wheel drive pulling trucks, and what has come to be known as Littlefoot, the four-wheel drive monster truck. No one could describe the features of these trucks better than the inventor of quarter-scale racing, Jeff Schmidt. Jeff took us back to 1979 with his invention of the quarter-scale sprint car, which has evolved into the trucks that now capture his imagination. The first cars back in 79, they could be related closer to Model T probably than what we're running now. The original quarter scale cars that we had uh, were just flat pan cars with no rear suspension, um, no sophisticated drives or anything. Most of them had uh, chain or belt drives. Now we've gotten down where we have miniaturized quick change rear ends, where we can change the gear ratios to suit the track conditions. The suspension is all very sophisticated. Another thing we've gotten into just recently is, is off-road racing, and we have the uh, quarter-scale stadium trucks now that are simulate the Mickey Thompson-style races, and getting into monster trucks, tractor pulls, the whole spectrum of cars is being done now in quarter-scale. This is a QRS stadium off-road truck, and it's built to really take a lot of abuse and high jumps, and basically, you know, as you can see, the desert style races and stadium races. Got lots of suspension. And we can get in here a little bit and look at some of the, the technical aspects of the car. Front is independent, front independent suspension with the A arms. And you can see there's quite a bit of engineering that goes into the geometry and everything to eliminate bump steer and the different technical type things like that. This is a quarter scale racing specialties monster truck. It's their newest truck. Um, it's a four wheel drive, four wheel steer. You can see it's got some pretty good size flotation tires. It uses the same 23cc engine as we're using in the stadium trucks and most of the sprint cars and super modifieds we're running out here. This is an expansion chamber to extract the maximum horsepower out of the engine, which is, comes in handy in a vehicle like this. We can use all the horsepower we can get. Well, when it's all buttoned up, it makes a pretty nice package. And for anybody that's followed the full-size monster trucks, they've all heard of Bigfoot and everything. Everybody's kind of tagging this one, Littlefoot. The exciting midgets, screaming motorcycles, outlaw sprints, Grand Nationals, Super Modified, even the monster trucks. A wide variety of different types of vehicles, and that same variety involved in quarter-scale racing. These radio-controlled operators of the quarter-scale car come in all sizes and shapes. All these people involved are what make up this family-type camaraderie of the quarter-scale community. Race promoter and enthusiast Ken Higdon talks about the sport he enjoys most. Other racers are all walks of life here. We have uh, gentlemen that are car dealers, some are construction people, builders, uh, people in the hotel business. The people are always willing to help each other. When you get out on the track, there's, uh, it's, you go for it. But in the pit, something is broke, somebody will get you parts to help you out. And uh, it's, just, it's just a great sport right now. Before the competition begins, the racers get together to go through rules and regulations with the CUSAC officials. Just like in full-size racing, there are strict codes that must be adhered to to ensure all the racers an equal chance on the track. Of course, the racers pose a lot of technical questions. And while the questions are direct, it all boils down to a race won on skill. At the end of the A main event, all of the cars stop on the racetrack. All of the cars stop on the racetrack. We're going to impound the top four cars. So it, when the A main events are over, nobody touches any car. And 
until we determine who the top four are. Those cars will be impounded and put underneath the stand here, and they'll be torn down after the race is over. It's real simple. These engines are stuck. The rules read no modification. So if you've done anything that's illegal, whether no it's removing or adding to of any right. material. Will you reweigh the cars after the race? We will weigh the Absolutely. Cars. We will also uh, check wings, and we will also check wheel tracks. You're within the limits or you're not. It's that simple. If you're, if one thing is one thousandths out of limit, that's not a margin, that's illegal. If you're going to make an engine that close, you've, you've done something to it, you've taken a chance, go away. There were also questions about transmitters and frequency pins, and Dale Smith took time out of his busy race day to explain. One of the unwritten laws, or written laws, is that you do not turn on the radio without a frequency pin and it usually comes off a frequency board. They're closed pins, which are usually uh, painted the different colors, orange, red, blue, yellow, brown, whatever, or they have like the 75 band on them. You go over to the frequency board, you take that clip, you put it on your radio, then you are allowed to turn on your radio and drive your car and check it and test it. Never, ever, never, ever, ever, never turn on the radio without the pin, because you will send somebody's car into orbit and destroy their car and feel real bad about it, and maybe get punched. Yeah. When the whistle is blown, is the track green at the starting line, or is the track green all the way around? When the whistle blows, the flag comes out, which you guys are going to have to put up with me today. When that whistle blows, let's go. He says, let's go. Another avid quarter-scale racer is Bill Deere with his red and white Grand National car, number 11. The reason I like the uh, racing is because being in a wheelchair and being a paraplegic gives me a chance to uh, compete with people that are on the sort of the same level as I am. Well, my biggest mechanic is my wife. Uh, this is the one that does all the work, really. She uh, hauls the car over there, does a lot of stuff on the sides, a lot of cleanup, a lot of go get me this and go get me that stuff. And, uh, Without her and the rest of these people, it'd just be kind of like, well, I wouldn't be able to do it, tell you the truth. We're a pretty good sized team, and that's what really makes it go. One thing about these cars here, uh, you gotta drive them like you were sitting in them, and if you get hurt, well, you don't have to worry about it sitting up on that stand. But you gotta use that in your head, so when you're driving this thing, put yourself in the car and you won't be so crazy out there. I know a lot of them, a lot of them get pretty excited, and, you gotta play uh, the turtle once in a while and sneak up on them boys. They're fast. And play the turtle he does. Calm and collected, maneuvering within the pack. Mental concentration transmitted from steady hands on the radio to the gripping tires on the track. But Bill Deere is also fast. As the racing continues, red and white number 11 can be seen flying down the straightaway, waiting for just the right opportunity, then passing through the turn. Unsure of the placings, Sharon Deere waits for the results. If he just transfers now, he'll move up to the next main, the main. Okay, go find out. And then the payoff. Car number 11 transfers to the next heat. Fourth place, car 11. Fifth place, car now the competition gets stiffer. Bill patiently waits on the racer stand as his car gets a few last minute adjustments. It's time to start the engines. A little last minute good luck. And the race is underway. The race appears to be going down to the wire for car number 11. But with this kind of intense bumper-to-bumper -bumper competition, something is bound to give. The last lap, just out of turn two, Bill receives an unlucky blow that throws him into the center of the track and out of the standings. 
quarter scale races are often won or lost with this kind of action, but the enjoyment and friendships are still there. Apology accepted from a fellow racer. Sorry, I thought he was going to go out a little high. Okay. Verification of the I'm going to the rest of them on. It's a good race. So it's back to the drawing board for Bill Deere's Grand National car, number 11. In Outlaw Spring Competition, Dale Smith's car, number 10, was tearing up pleased with the early results. I got fourth. I transferred to another main. All right, time to work your way up. After a short rain delay, Smith and blue car number 10 were back at it, weaving in and out, trying to maintain that fourth position that would guarantee Smith yet another transfer. Then again, that old last lap disaster came to haunt number 10. This is going to be it, gentlemen. When you get the green flag, you're going to have a one-lap drag race. You're going to get the green and white simultaneously. Green flag, green flag. The position is for fourth position. Dale Smith goes high and wins it. Tyrannus Series, Texas Series, that's the race. Dale Smith wins 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 Got tapped by a car, not good. Well, you can't win them all. You can't win them all. Quarter scale racing, an all around exciting event that eventually comes to an end. But those involved get much more out of these miniature cars than a checkered flag can give. The best part about this sport is not how fast your car is, it's not what you win, it's not the glorification, it's the camaraderie. It's a camaraderie that you just don't get anywhere else. Uh, and it's just like the big time racing. I mean, they'll go out there and they'll wreck each other and they'll break each other. And there may be a couple of little words said here and there, but pretty soon they're, they're sharing parts and the guy's over trying to get the guy back in the race. And they're tweaking and they're torquing and they're turning things on their car and trying to get the guy back in and, and so they can compete and beat his butt. Once a racer, always a racer is, is what it amounts to. Um, you get the same thrill from racing quarter scale cars that you did racing big ones. The only difference is you're not actually in the car, but that's good because your life and limb is not, a, not in danger. It's good that way. I didn't make the next main, but I had a good time out there, and that's what it's all about. Just as in any other competitive sport, Quarter scale racers do set their sights on victory, but the checkered flag is not their only reward. It's the thrill of the race, the challenge of the competition, and the enthusiasm of the fans. The result is a good time had by all.
Thank you.